Mushrooms can be pricey, especially decent ones like these, but by growing them yourself, you can be sure of picking shrooms at the peak of perfection and all for a lot less than the grocery store. They're also real powerhouses of goodness, great for the immune system and for fighting off diseases. Hi, I'm Ben, and if you're a funky fanatic like me, you're going to absolutely love today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, make some shroom for the mushroom. So in front of me here, I've got two mushroom growing kits for growing oyster mushrooms. And oyster mushrooms are great for beginners, and that's because they grow so fast in as little as two weeks from preparation to picking. Now, many of them will happily grow indoors, which is what we're going to do today, but others can be grown in logs and stumps to create an edible feast. They're very easy to grow and will grow on pretty much any growing medium, including old books. This kit here uses straw as the growing medium, and this box kit here uses coffee grounds. Fungi, after all, are nature's original recyclers. Great, so let's get on with our first kit, the oyster mushroom kit, and we're using um, 10 litre or two and a half US gallon pots for this. You can actually use two pots of half the volume if you liked. This one I've already used before, hence the holes, and I'll show you more about that in a moment. Then the growing medium, what are the mushrooms going to grow in? Well, straw, and these are straw pellets. They're nice and sterile, dehydrated, and we've got to rehydrate those first, ready for the mushrooms to grow into. And then there's the spawn itself, the seeds, if you like, of the mushrooms. These are on uh, barley pellets here, barley grains, and they're all inoculated, hence it's white, so they're primed and ready to go. The first job, though, is to sterilise our pot so it's nice and clean. Just use a dilute solution of household bleach for this and wipe it around the clean pot just to remove any germs, and then just let it dry. Different mushroom growing kits will have different instructions. This one calls for holes to be made into the side of the pot so that the fruiting bodies, the bits you'll actually eat, can come out. And the easiest way to do that is to get a sharp pair of scissors and insert it through the thin walls of the plastic pot and then twist it to cut a round of about one and a half centimetres or half an inch. You'll want to make sure that the uh, straw doesn't escape from the drainage holes in the bottom. So for that, we just pop in a cut to size piece of cardboard and just pop that straight into the bottom. Now we need to fill the pot with our straw and our spawn. First thing though, is to break up all the bits of grain here to make it nice and loose so they're all in individual pieces. This makes it easier to mix the spawn with the straw pellets. And in they go. And then in go our spawn grains. And then they just need a really good thorough mix up. And make sure you've got perfectly clean hands for this because you don't want to introduce any germs, of course. And then to rehydrate the straw pellets, I'm adding four and a half litres or roughly a gallon of water, half now and half shortly. And it's got to be trickled on really slowly to give the straw a chance to absorb it. If you fill the pot up while it's in a sterilised tray, this will allow the excess water to be absorbed up through the drainage holes as well. And then after about half an hour, you can add your second lot of water, again very slowly to help it all sink in. Once the straw pellets have fully rehydrated, make yourself a lid. And the easiest way to do this is to cut out a piece of cardboard to fit and wrap it in some sort of food wrap like cling film. Once you've done that, pop it over the top. That will help to retain the moisture and keep the straw nice and damp. The other thing to do is where you've got a hole, just push the straw in to create a sort of cavity. That creates a moisture environment at that entry point there keeping the conditions perfectly damp for your mushrooms. Slows evaporation as well. Now it's prepared, we just need to offer warm conditions for the mycelium, or the mushroom roots if you like, to grow. Room temperature is ideal, but keep the pot away from direct sources of heat. To keep things going, simply mist spray the holes a couple of times a day. This will stop the straw from getting too dry, offering that moist environment that mushrooms need. And here's the kit just two weeks after starting it off. And you can already see that the straw is completely white with mycelium. 
this is now poised to produce those delicious mushrooms. Continue to mist the holes twice daily and within a week or two, you should notice small clusters of primordia, the beginnings of the fruiting bodies, the mushrooms that we'll be picking. They'll soon swell into full-sized mushrooms and this shouldn't take more than about a week to 10 days after spotting the primordia. The best time to harvest oyster mushrooms is before the caps have fully flattened out when they dump lots of spores everywhere. Twist free the whole cluster at once. The mushrooms will be different sizes and that's fine. And trim any stump out with a sharp knife right back to fresh straw. Continue misting and you can expect new mushrooms to sprout from the harvested hole in due course. They should keep cropping every few weeks for up to around 10 weeks. I hate waste and our morning cup of joe creates plenty of it in the form of these coffee grounds. But what if you could turn them into these? This is what this kit does here. It uses coffee grounds mixed with a little bit of straw to create the perfect growing medium for our mushrooms. Let's get it started. The first job for this kit is simply to uh, remove the perforated front here to access the bag with the growing medium in it. Just comes off nicely like that. Now you'll find many different types of mushroom kits and do use a proper mushroom kit from an approved supplier because you uh, don't want to sort of inadvertently get poisoned or anything like that. Uh, they, they come with all sorts of growing mediums. We've, we've looked at the straw one. This one uses coffee grounds and straw, but uh, just use what is available in your area. And I'll pop a link to a few suppliers in the video description down below. Right, so we've opened it out and the next job is to just cut open the front here by simply cutting an X into the bag like this. And now we just need to remove the bag from the box and soak it overnight in water. Just pop the bag in the water and because it's quite light at this stage you'll need to weigh it down with something heavy like that. And look at this, this is the same kit just one week after starting it off. And if you look closely, you can already see that the primordia have started to grow. These will grow really, really fast, doubling in size pretty much every day. I only noticed them as tiny pinpricks this morning, and now, just a few hours on, they're very much visible. And here's the kit just three days on. Yes, really. And here it is, five days on and look how much it's grown. I reckon it's almost ready to harvest. I'll give it one more day. Hey, look, and here they are another day on. Let's get on and harvest them. And to harvest, all I'm simply doing is gripping them firmly where they come out of the kit and then just twisting and pulling like that. Get the whole clump off like that. Gosh, there's an awful lot here. This is going to be a fantastically delicious and extravagant dinner, right? Oh, yes. What absolute beauties. There we go. That's not a bad harvest, is it, for my first cut? Now, I've harvested them while they're still slightly curled over because when they're flat, they do dump their spores. So at this point is just perfect. What about the kit that's uh, left here? Well, I'll trim off any old bits here, then I'm going to take it out of the box, re-soak the bag overnight, pop it back in, and then mist spray regularly as before to expect to harvest within another couple of weeks or so. And I may even get a third and even a fourth cut if I'm lucky by just repeating the process. All I've got to think about now is how I'm going to cook these for my tea. There are, of course, plenty of other mushrooms you can grow at home. They're all delicious. That's the morel of the story. Oh, Daddy. Really, I should button it. In our next episode, we'll be looking at tools and how to take care of them ready for next growing season. Don't miss it. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be sure. In the meantime, why not check out this video? Have fun, guys, and I will catch you next time.